I think mental health could be a wide variety of different things. Me personally, I've obviously suffered with addiction, etc. So late night casinos, uh, late night binges, drinking, etc. Um, and then going to go out there and perform um, was a very, very difficult cycle. And um, as, I, as the years progressed and I moved up and got more and more in the public eye, I think by the time I was at Tottenham, it was, it was horrific for me, you know, having to to wake up the next day after a blackout and not being able to remember what happened the night before and people tweeting about it and you know whatever forms of social media there are nowadays and it brings a lot of shame um, and that sort of starts the cycle if you like that's why I then sort of can't deal with the shame, can't deal with the embarrassment so then want to go escape again and you know the cycle continues. It's something I've not spoke about too much, it's something I spoke about recently, I come out publicly and, and, and shared my story um, in the hope that it would obviously inspire and encourage others to do the same. Um, and I feel it has, I feel, I feel a few people now have, 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 have spoken publicly and a few people have reached out to me as well. I like to obviously push in the direction of you know the PFA and counsellors outside of that, that I've worked with etc that I know and trust in. Um, but in terms of initially speaking out, it, it was difficult. I spoke to a few managers. There was no understanding there of, of what I was going for, going through, um, and a lot of it was just, you know, get back out of the pitch and everything will be all right. But there becomes a point where, you know, what the pitch isn't going to solve it, and it, it's deeper than that. And um, it, it got to the stage it was taking over my whole life. I couldn't make training because I was in such a state. And um, you know, I'll be honest, I'm fortunate to still be sitting in now with, with, a, with, a, with a job. So. I think the money's irrelevant. I think the money's absolutely irrelevant. All I think is, for me, in my personal experience, the money um, masked a lot of what was going on because people, family members, etc., knew I was struggling but couldn't necessarily confront me too much because it's like, well, hold on, I'm paying the bills, I'm, I've got the house, I've got this, so it's, it's difficult. They're in a difficult position to challenge me as much as if I was on the street. It's the obvious, pick yourself up, you need to sort yourself out. So I think the money masked a lot of what was going on for me and it sort of sugarcoated the sort of the internal damage that was taking place. Um, and it definitely allowed me to do more um, damage, if you like. It's, it's funny because I always ignored the depression. I always thought, no, nah, no, nah, this is just the, it's, it's the gambling, that's, it's the addiction, it's the addiction that I stopped that, I won't feel this way if I just stopped that. But sitting in now, I realise actually what that was, was it was a constant need to escape. So it didn't matter to me whether it was women, gambling, alcohol, whatever it would be. Um, that was just a preference, that was just you know, my sort of choice of uh, escapism, but it was a constant need to escape myself from what I was escaping from um, is what I'm now discovering you know, through therapy, etc. that there's a constant need to, to sort of run and you know, I'm not gonna run no more, I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna face my demons, um, I'm gonna work through it, I've got a manager who, who's willing to work with me and um, I'm not gonna run.